What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and I apologize in advance if I sound a bit under the weather. I caught a pretty bad cold this past weekend. No, it's not COVID, but hopefully it doesn't impact the commentary too much. But in today's video, we have a lot to break down. The return of Dr. Maxis in Black Ops Cold War, an update on the Victus remakes, and even new details on the new Liquid Davidium and replayable challenges within the Machina. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and also let me know in the comments what were your thoughts on the the Haunting of Verdansk trailer. Yes, zombies are finally coming to Warzone. I know information about that surfaced a number of months ago, but the event finally starts tomorrow. I think it was a really well put together trailer, and it's probably going to be the best season that Warzone has had to offer up until this point. I'll be covering as much of the Haunting of Verdansk here on my channel throughout this week. There's supposed to be a full length Easter egg and even cutscene with the zombies event, so I'll keep you guys updated with all of that. Now, hopefully, this video doesn't magically disappear since nothing caught copyright protected will be shown or heard in this video. This video does meet all legal requirements for fair use laws, and the source is of course Activision as it's their game. However, I'll be taking legal action against anyone who falsely and illegally copyright strikes this video. This is just going to be me providing commentary over what is now public information that was reported by several news outlets. So starting off with the Victus remakes, as we call Zombies Chronicles 2, the map pack at one time was 100% going to release in Black Ops 4, but like many other things in game development, it got cancelled. So, as I always say, with game development, things get very complicated. One day something is set in stone, the next day it's cancelled. Take supply drops as an example. In Modern Warfare, there is proof that they existed, but a week before launch, they scrapped them. Things like that happen all the time. So, you guys know, myself and a few others were chasing quite a few stories about the Victus remakes for Black Ops 4, and I always laugh when someone out there, whether it's myself or another content creator, is consistently posting accurate information that it's coming true time and time again, but then one day, we end up posting an update on something that ends up getting cancelled, changed, or moved, and then our credibility gets questioned. So that's how silly the Call of Duty community can be sometimes. But now, specific details about the Victus remakes include the following. So I was reached out to by some very reputable people, and as I was told, back during Black Ops 4, there was actually going to be 8 DLC maps instead of just the 4 that we got, with remasters of every single Black Ops 2 map except for Origins. So... It makes sense why Origins wasn't included, but it seems like we may have actually saw a faithful remaster of Mob of the Dead on top of Blood of the Dead that was already in the game. Now, because Black Ops 4 financially flopped, they canceled the additional DLC maps, but Buried was 100% completed, while Die Rise and Transit were still being worked on. Now, what's funny about that is that we have proof of Buried being 100% completed inside of Blackout, and we see quite a few Transit assets across multiplayer, but as you guys may have seen about, I think, a week and a half ago, I put out a tweet saying, that the same person who actually revealed the Dead Ops Arcade 3 intro cutscene a bit early, I know they shouldn't have, but that same person actually has proof that there is a build of Die Rise on the Black Ops 4 engine. So there you have it, several forms of confirmation from a lot of different reputable people around the community, so that should put that to rest. Now this person also said that because Black Ops Cold War has been received very well thus far, this map pack is said to be included throughout the DLC season. So because DLC is free for Black Ops Cold War Zombies, Zombies, we'll probably end up seeing these Victus maps released periodically, which I think is great. I mean, if you release a bunch of new maps throughout the season and then throw in some remakes in there as well, I think it'll make everybody happy. Now, because DLC is free, I don't even mind when these maps end up releasing, but what I will say is that the maps probably fit better with Black Ops Cold War than they would have with Black Ops 4, considering classic perks have returned and other mechanics that are going to be superior to what we saw to Black Ops 4's gameplay. Now, what I'll also say is that, similar to D-Machina, I think these Victus remakes are going to get similar treatment to how Noct is being handled, where you see iconic locations from the classic Victus maps, but then they're going to be expanded upon in ways we've never seen before. Just look at how Noct is being handled in D-Machina right now. But it leads me to my next point, which is, of course, D-Machina. So as you guys may already know, in the reveal trailer, we got a glimpse of our classic perks like Quick Revive, Juggernaug, Speed Cola, and even Deadshot. Now, I also reported that Stamina Up is going to be a perk. We just didn't get a glimpse of it within the gameplay reveal yet. 
but I did report on Elemental Pop, which I think I reported on that, I want to say two weeks before the actual gameplay trailer, so Elemental Pop looks fantastic. Cannot wait to see how it works in game. It looks beautiful as a perk machine already, but when it comes to Double Tap, I'm sure you guys are probably still wondering, what are they doing with that perk? So as of now, and this is subject to change, Double Tap is still integrated within the Pack-a-Punch system, so it's unclear if it's going to be exactly the same as Black Ops 4, where you have to repack like four times to get it, or maybe they'll integrate it in a bit of a different way, but could this change before release? Absolutely. Could they end up just doing a typical double tap machine at some point? Yes, but let's just wait and see. Now, in terms of specialist, here's something I also wanted to clarify. I had a few comments asking why I'm calling these specialists when they're just field upgrades, and here's the thing. It's the same thing to me. You're going to be equipping your field upgrade just how you would take out a specialist in a previous game with your L2, R2, or however your controls are. It's the same thing, but as of right now, we have an update on the amount of field upgrades. So there appears to be more than four when originally we only had information about four field upgrades. We reported on an energy mind, a frost blast, an ether shroud, and a healing aura. Some of these you can actually see exactly in Call of Duty Mobile. One-to-one -one reimaginings of the ones from Call of Duty Mobile will be in Black Ops Cold War Zombies. But now we've been hearing about something else. We started hearing about a frenzy guard, lightning link, ring fire, and toxic growth. So as of right now, there are up to eight different field upgrades in game. So that's pretty cool. We have doubled the amount that we knew before. Now it's unclear as to how we're going to be able to equip these. Do we have to level up before we can unlock them and use them? Or do we craft these in game? Who actually knows? But I'm sure we'll end up finding this out very close to release. Now we have more details on the return of Dr. Maxis. So some time ago, I was hearing plenty of rumors that Dr. Maxis apparently makes a bit of a cameo in the actual campaign in the form of logs. So there'll be Easter eggs of some sort where you can actually learn information about Maxis in this new rebooted universe. So let's see how his character ends up being played out. But now we have a lot of sensitive information that I'm sure you guys already saw online because it's everywhere. It's on Twitter. It's on Reddit. But we apparently have Maxis Intel in D Machina. So we have the following challenges, right? Collect Omega Intel. So there'll be Intel, I guess, for both Maxis and Omega. I'm not sure. Reach round 20 with only your starting loadout and no upgrades. Reach round 100. So maybe high rounds won't be that hard this time around, unless it is. We have have two fully pack-a-punch weapons with ammo mods equipped and six perks active. Travel to every area in a single game. Kill enemies while slowed down or frozen form frost damage. Not sure what that means. Heal self for other players for over 100 health. Get critical kills. Kill enemies using pack-a-punch weapons and earn multi-kills with equipment such as frags, semtex, molotov C4s, or monkey bombs. Now, the typos make sense considering this is of course early information about the game it'll of course be rewritten to make more sense and to sound like actual english once the game actually releases but now we have information about raw ethereum crystals so this sounds like the new form of liquid divinium or plasma which i guess we'll end up using to unlock certain things in the game and this doesn't surprise me considering liquid divinium made activision a lot of money back during black ops 3 they probably didn't make as much money with plasma in black ops 4 but zombies microtransactions still make money no matter what. Milestone rounds will reward players with salvage and a chance at raw ethereum crystals. Maybe salvage as a ward is a placeholder for something else, but if not, we'll be seeing something similar to the infinite warfare zombie system, which to me, as I've been told and as I've seen for myself, it's a great system, so I wouldn't complain about that at all. Being able to use salvage, crypto keys, crystals, whatever the hell you want to call it, to unlock things just through gameplay is the best system to have, but if you want to spend money on these crystals or the salvage, you can do that as well as another option. I have no problem with those options at all. Now, there are also flawless ethereum crystals. We don't know what that means. Pack a bunch upgrades, weapon damage, and applies ammo mods using essence. So that sounds pretty cool. I mean, you know, combining that, the essence with elemental pop, you're going to be overpowered as fuck, no matter what weapon you're using. Weapons with higher rarity deal more damage and have more attachments. Pack a punch level, a weapon determines the cost to refill it in an ammo cache. So that's crazy. We know about weapon rarity already. You know, think of Fortnite. I think that's going to be a cool system we've never seen before. But then being able to refill your ammo at a cache that sounds really interesting as well and depending on the level of your weapon will determine how much money it costs to then buy ammo for it i think that's fair enough that's good balance uh crafting table creates equipment and support using salvage enemies get stronger every time the dark ether orb moves 
Not sure if that's Easter egg related or what that can mean, but there you have it. More details on D Machina within Black Ops Cold War Zombies. This mode is seriously sounding to be like one of the most innovative zombies experiences in years. And on top of that, we get more zombies than we asked for, you know, starting in Warzone tomorrow. So get your first glimpse of zombies on a new engine within Verdansk. That's going to be great. But then this game just sounds to be like the perfect iteration of zombies, taking everything that's worked from Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare, even Exo Zombies, even some World War II, take all of that, put it in the same pot, stir it, and we have Black Ops Cold War. I think this is just something that is mind blowing and it just makes endless amounts of content for us creators out there who are very excited about YouTube this year. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you guys think about this new information about Black Ops Cold War Zombies? Will you be playing The Haunting of Verdansk tomorrow? And also let me know in the comments if you guys haven't seen my recent video. What do you think a collector's edition will look like for Black Ops Cold War if one still happens? That is about it. And peace out, everyone.